Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Martin and I would like to show you today how I do hang vaults for climbing. First of all, what we're going to do is uh, try to establish a position for the pallet which I'm using. You can see that in the background, made out of wood. And uh, I will be making this parallel as much as possible because it's wood with the X axis. So it can be run straight and true to the previous operation. Over here you can see me mounting the indicator into one of the Noga arm which is directly attached to the Z axis. Once that's done I start dialing in slowly and trying to establish a position with the indicator and see how far actually the deviation is. It's not going to be perfect on this one because like I said before the pallet is made out of wood which is less than ideal but I can dial it in to around probably a tenth of a millimeter. The whole process can take a while, it's a trial and error sometimes. You just have to go back and forward and just keep dialing in until the needle is pretty much idle and it doesn't move. If that part would be done in aluminium, I could easily dial this so the needle doesn't move at all. On this one, because it's wood and it's warped slightly, I will not be able to dial it as perfectly as I would like to. Over here you can see my closest attempt to dialing that fairly true with the x-axis. It's still got one of a tenth millimeter deviation from straight. I will be using 10 millimeter free flute end mill for majority of first operation and second operation. Over here you can see me attaching the end mill into the ER collet. In a minute I will request the Mark IV to measure the tool. This will happen automatically. The tool is going to go into the known position of the tool setter, which is right in the background. It will get touched off once. After that it will get touched off again really slowly and it will be coming back towards me to the previous position. In this shot you can see me establishing position, reference position for X and Y. This really should be done with the indicator but unfortunately I don't have the correct arm to grab into the spindle to hold the indicator right now. I just manually establish the position for X and Y. Now you can see me checking if that position was correct. The Z plane is on top of the pallet and it's been established before. This is the um, hangboard which is getting mounted into the pallet. Just gentle tap tap so it's seated properly. Now I'm um, tightening in six screws which are inside of the 3D printed mounts which spread when the screw is getting tighter and this is how the clamping force is getting provided to the part. This is the only solution which I came up with so I could basically go around the part and do all the operations from all 
sides apart from the bottom obviously so i can do top and all the sides in one operation without moving any clamping and it clamping doesn't interfere with anything else Once all the screws being tight tightened, everything is done and I can load the program in a Mac 4 and just hit start and the job will be started. The first order of operation is facing the top surface. This is getting done into the final dimension. The step over is in this case 4 millimeters. The speed is 6000 millimeters a minute. Usually I do use a vacuum to clear up the chips but for the filming purposes I remove the I remove the vacuum holding so we can see the um, end mill in action in the later uh, generation of the code I speed this up so it's going with 7000 millimeters a second with a step over of six millimeter and it's doing absolutely fine there is uh, no need for me to go in that slow i will speed up the footage so we can see still how it's getting done but it's not going to take as long so just enjoy the show Now we're getting into the second operation which is contour. On this operation the cutter is going around the part bringing into its final dimension. It's doing this in three passes and three steps down. I did learn in the end it's way too much. I mean it's not too much in terms of how much it's cutting. It's, uh, it's taking way too long and it's absolutely unnecessary so later generation of the code is doing this in two step downs in single pass and one spring pass and instead of nearly five minutes it's less than a minute so this operation was updated to the newer code and it looks much much more efficient And again, I will speed this process up so you don't have to watch this cutting air for so long. So it's uh, gonna be done more quickly and uh, I will catch you on the next operation. Oh, and by the way, because I'm pretty sure you all want to know that information, I'm cutting 6,500 millimeters a second, and the step over is only one millimeter. Later on, it's increased to two millimeters, so it's doing in one pass. Now, since the previous operation is already done, we're gonna move into another two operations, which is gonna be the first one, parallel and the second one it's gonna be free contour uh, we're gonna be doing those operations with 10 millimeter ball nose end mill free fluid full carbide this is will this will bring a 3d curve into the back of the board so there is a place for the fingers to grab and we can use the board for doing pull-ups 
and we're gonna add as well chamfers to the edges to the rest of the free size I will be doing this with this same end mill because the chamfers are too large and I don't have a chamfer too large enough to do it in single pass so I will do with the bullnose end mill but it works fairly well in this case this operation it's being done 4500 millimeters a second with a step down of 0.3 millimeter I'm doing this with so fine of a step down because after that there is pretty much no post processing required and the board is coming out fairly smooth and nothing pretty much needs to be done to the board in the newer generation of the same code I speed this process up to nearly 8000 millimeters a second to um, reduce the time required to machine this part and uh, I'm not losing any quality just speeding up the process and uh, everything is looks uh, fairly smooth there is no markups on the part so I managed to reduce nearly 30% of the time on the single operation which is significantly I'll speed up the process now so you can still watch the entire board being pretty curved but it's just going to be quicker in this shot you can see the bonus end mill is actually doing chamfer with the um, 3D contour strategy and in this case it's working quite well it's a very good strategy in Fusion 360 for doing steep overhanging not overhanging but steep walls the um, step down is again 0.3 millimeter like I have mentioned before such a fine step down it's uh, mainly done so there is no post processing required i know it's taking more time to do it but at the same time the finish on the part is just phenomenal this is the same view of the previous operation just from the different angle so you can see how the actual bone nose end mill is creating that curve which half is done in the first setup which is not shown in this video and now we continue in the second setup now i'm changing the end mill if there is a shot of that free flute 10 millimeter end mill and now i'm changing this to two flute ball nose end mill six millimeter in diameter i need to change the er cord for this operation so it's just quickly gonna swap it into the six millimeter collet tighten up in the spindle and place the end mill inside the spindle tighten up with the hand now you can start the operation this one it's another 3g 3d strategy and we'll do a curve on the inside edge for the rope to run through so the edges are nice and smooth and there is no risk of tearing up the rope it's just gonna put nice fillet around the uh, around that slot on both of the sides this operation is very short but I will speed it up slightly so take so much time on the video this operation is getting down 4500 millimeters a minute step over its 0.2 millimeter for smooth finish and on uh, corners I did uh, add a function to slow down rapid turns 
in this shot you can see I'm holding a another end mill this one it's two fluid down cut one millimeter end mill solid carbide I'm using down cut instead of up cut because I want to preserve really nice crisp edges on the top surface I will be using this end mill for engraving or tracing a logo this is that end mill in action I'm tracing a logo it's one millimeter deep full slot the speed it's 600 millimeters a minute on full 24,000 rpm it's slow but in this case it needs to be fairly slow because the end mill is tiny and I don't want to snap that guy which did happen a few times previously even in wood it's possible to snap one of those tiny end mills this operation it's gonna get done twice the first one is gonna do everything on the single pass and then it's gonna retrace exactly the same path again just to get rid of any wood dust and chips from the inside because it's really hard to remove them by hand so I rather spend extra time on the same operation just slightly quicker because it's going to be going 1000 millimeter a second to get rid of any debris which is stuck between those tiny little letters I will speed this up now Now, after everything is completed, you can see me removing hangboard from the pallet. I'm just undoing the six little screws which holding this hangboard in place. After that's done, the hangboard is pretty much completed. In this video, I only showed the second setup. The reason being, I am a problem with my card and then a file get corrupted so you can see the logo on the back of the board you can see the slots and all the 3d contours with a chamfers as well and the front side of the board as well which i will show in the upcoming video thanks for watching and Enjoy.